Well, right now, NOAA has a warning for beachgoers. They're forecasting a risk of high infection of respiratory irritation from red tide. Yeah, some of the affected beaches are in Pinellas, Sarasota, Collier, and Lee counties. We're all familiar with the impact red tide and its toxic blooms can have on our breathing. But did you know that blue-green algae can actually do the same thing? New tonight, ABC Action News In-Depth reporter Rochelle Aline shows us how Florida researchers are working hard to study its impact on the air we breathe. In this lab at Florida Gulf Coast University, we get sent in samples from around the U.S. Algae is the star of the show. So it's tiny but mighty. More specifically, researchers are looking into blue-green algae. They do actually produce toxins. And how many of these toxins are actually getting into our bodies through the air we breathe. As of now, detailed guidelines for exposure to these toxins only really exist for drinking water or recreation. It's a vast difference from the amount of guidance we see when compared to red tide. We have a good base data about red tide, but we don't have that for the blue-green algae, and so we're trying to provide that sort of baseline data to know like where to jump off from. Collecting that baseline data is a passion project for FGCU Water School student Trinity Allen. <laughs> it's a lot, I know it's a lot to think about. And we traveled down to the Fort Myers lab she works in to see her work firsthand. Under the hum of these two water tanks, she's working to figure out if salt water makes the algae release more of those toxins into the air. She's also trying to see how many of these toxins we would breathe in on a windy day by measuring the number of particles the algae releases. So we write down the total count. So that time it was 18,351. It's a measure she's taken every day for months, and she'll repeat this process until early summer when she expects to have more concrete answers to her questions. And then we got an animal trapped in this colony. It's work that Allen's professor, Dr. Barry Rosen, is also tracking from under the microscope. So I'm going to zoom in. And he says the implications of this research could help to shape future guidelines. You're by the water, there's no air movement, or there is air movement. How much of that gets up into the air? How much are we breathing in? Again, it might be minuscule and it's not a concern, but as a scientist, we need to know. But in the end, Allen tells us she hopes this vital work doesn't overshadow the good that blue-green algae can also do. Blue-green algae does provide really important resources for the environment as well, as far as like the food chain and photosynthesizing and producing oxygen, all these things that we kind of forget about when we just see the bad side of them. In Fort Myers with photojournalist Josh Whitston, I'm in depth.